All right, let's take a look at futures this morning on a big week of retail earnings. Uh, we've actually had kind of a retrenchment this morning. Dow is up only no, by 33 points. NASDAQ and S&P kind of pulling back as well. Kohl's reporting mixed results on earnings. Same store sales down 5%. That was worse than expected. Foot Locker really falling on missed revenue. They cut the annual sales and earnings forecast. And now we're looking at NVIDIA. Those earnings out after the bell today. Joining me now is the Bonson Group Chief Investment Officer, Founder, Managing Partner, and the author of DividendCafe.com, David Bonson. David, good morning. Good morning. Good to be with you. Yeah, we've gone through a lot of these retail numbers now, and then we're looking ahead to NVIDIA. What's important? Well, I think that with NVIDIA, their actual reported earnings have very little to do with how the company trades, because when you're up a couple hundred percent in nine months, you're really trading off of just a sentiment, a sort of euphoria from investors that have bid the valuation very high. And so it's sort of priced for like 20 years of perfection, what they announce in a particular three-month period is less relevant. Building this ongoing excitement that they have this sort of infinity opportunity in AI, that's what the company is trying to do. Well, we'll see what they uh, tell us after the bell tonight. Certainly, uh, any forecast that we get from them is going to be uh, crucial. And you know, we're looking at possibly a 10% move on the stock either way, <laughs> if you look at the bets right now on it. Uh, I want to talk about interest rates, and in particular, bond yields. You know, the 10-year yield right now is sitting at its highest level since 2007. And we're obviously watching the September meeting for the Fed. But more importantly, Adam Johnson's going to weigh in on this, uh, is Fed Chair Jay Powell. He's got this Jackson Hole speech on Friday morning. Uh, what are you expecting here? I mean, we know they're data dependent, uh, but it seems to be more about the employment story uh, with j Powell than it is really about interest rates at this point. Yeah, I think that's right. And I think it's very unfortunate because what that indicates is they do believe that unemployment is necessary to get inflation down or price stability. And it's categorically false. People losing their jobs does not create uh, lower inflation. In fact, I think people producing more goods and services lowers inflationary pressures. And yet that trade off that they think they have to break something economically to get price stability is apparently how they're operating. I don't know what he'll say in Jackson Hole. He did move the market a lot last year. Uh, the speech last year was one of the big hawkish moments in this period. But many, many years, the Jackson Hole speech has sort of just been a nothing burger. And it's very possible that'll be the case here. The thing I want to really point out, though, is that the 10-year bond yield has nothing to do with the Fed. The Fed controls the short end of the curve. And really, you want a 4 or 5% 10-year bond yield because it means that somebody out there actually believes we're going to get some economic growth. The reason 4% seems like a big deal to us is because we've had a 10-year around 2 to 3% for 15 years. And we've had that because there's been such subpar economic growth because of excessive government spending. It's put pressure down on growth and growth expectations. And that's a huge problem. Well, and, and there's a lot of thinking out there that, that you know, interest rates, uh, the, the Fed's positioning is here to stay, uh, that we're not going to go to that ultra low rate environment that really has powered us through, as to your point, over the last you know, 15 years. Uh, Adam Johnson's on set with me. He's got a question for you. Oh, thanks, Cheryl. Yeah, David, uh, I, as a growth investor, have certainly um, had to deal with uh, rising rates myself, right? Because higher rates mean that those future earnings are worth less today. Therefore, the stocks go down. I'm also of the view that uh, the Fed will engineer a safe landing. I have stayed long, my uh, precious growth stocks, but I've had to go higher up on the quality curve. Some of the little ones that I loved, I had to get rid of. How are you dealing with uh, the pressure from rates? Yeah, see, we, we're in a little different boat, Adam, because we're dividend growth investors and it's much more cash flow generation than it is multiple dependent. And so if we're getting growing dividends, there tends to be more of a value bias for us and less of a growth orientation in what you do at your firm. But I do believe that the key expression there is around soft landing is Fed generate one. And I don't agree. I think that what you probably are hoping for is that the Fed falls into one, right? That circumstances 
circumstances come together in a way that we end up with a soft landing, I think that is the most likely scenario. But I, my fear is that people will believe the Fed did it. And I don't agree with that. I don't think we should continue functioning with the deification of the Federal Reserve, this idea that they have godlike powers over the economy. I think that's a problem going forward. Well, but they did do some destruction, to, to be clear here. But that was the whole point, uh, to get inflation under control, which came from all the heavy fiscal uh, spending that we got out of Washington under President Biden. Uh, Tiana Lodesh is on set with me as well. So last time at Jackson Hole, you know, we were really trying to hear how restrictive for how and how high would we go with those rates. But now it's not just a question of how long, but I also think in a chicken and egg type question, what will we see first? Will we see the Fed expand its balance sheet or would we see rate cuts before that point? And what would be those financial conditions uh. that, that would impel that? So, David, what are you looking for in terms of cluing us in? Yeah, I think that if you get back to some catalyst where there's a bad event and the Fed wants to come intervene and accommodate, I think you'd see both. I I think that they would both be lowering the Fed funds rate. And I don't believe the quantitative tightening can continue or will continue much longer. Candidly, they've done more of it than I would have expected they will. But the lesson of Japan to me here is that once a central bank expands their balance sheet, there's very limited ability to ever contract it. The society and the financial markets become really dependent on it. And so that idea that the Fed is not likely to go back to the zero balance that's all very easy to say when the economy is not in a recession. But I don't know why anyone would believe that the Fed would not go back there. I think they will go back there when the conditions call for it. And I think that's a terrible thing. Ooh. David Bonson, some great points for me this morning, David. Thank you. Thanks so much.